hollering at him, but I guess he, he knew you really don't need it in here, but the stand don't appreciate it, I guess, when we don't use it, so I better, I don't want to make the sound man mad. You love the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll be honest, I had, um, I'll be honest, I'd never have considered that scripture the way uh, Brother Matthew just brought it out, uh, but it makes perfect sense, and um, uh, and he's right. He's I, not because I say he's right. It's just it's just right. <laughs> and um, you don't know where you're at until you get there, and then you realize, wow, why did I go here? I mean, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so uh, he's he's dead on the money there, and um, and I appreciate the words of encouragement and um, him. Just speaking what was on his heart. If more people would do that, um, we'd be a lot better off. Amen. You love the Lord tonight. Amen. He's good. I'm glad Uncle Bob's back. I thought we was going to have to send a posse after him. I know he don't never miss church, and, uh, and then when he wasn't here, it was a uh, you know it was a little different not seeing him and, and Mama George there. So appreciate them for being here. Uh, this morning we had. Uh, dealt a little bit on the 15th verse of, a, of 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And I want to try to pick up where we left off. I have sort of something still stirred in my heart about this. It says, For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. He says, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. And uh, uh, Brother Miles, I got a bottle of water in the truck. If you would get that for me. Uh, be ye followers of me. Now, I began to think about this as I was, today as I was doing things. And, um, and I liked Apostle Paul's wording there. He says, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Uh, and I began to think about that, Uncle Bob. And I says, now that's... That's pretty good when you can tell the people, just follow me. And, um, you know, and you look at Jesus, and Jesus said the very same thing, follow me. And then we got Apostle Paul coming up, and he's saying, follow me. He's not pointing them to Jesus. He's not pointing them to the man that died on the, on the cross. But you notice the wording. He says, for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So Apostle Paul's pointing them to Christ. Are you with me today? All right. You have to say, well, where's Christ? Well, like I said this morning, we established he's in us. How many's got the Holy Ghost in here? I mean, if you got the Holy Ghost, then Christ is in you. Now, it was just this week I was talking to someone, and they says, well, they was mentioning Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Matter of fact, Brother Dale Hefton, we was talking, and he said, I noticed in your prayer that you mentioned God a lot. And I said, that's right. And um, he said, so you understand the difference between God and Jesus? I said, absolutely. I said, Jesus was useless without the Spirit. Right, but when the Spirit of God came in, the Bible says it pleased the Father that the fullness of God dwelt bodily 
with inside the man, Jesus. How many knows what I'm talking about tonight? And so if you would have taken the spirit away from the man, Jesus, then ladies and gentlemen, he was just like you and I before the Holy Ghost. But you give Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Christ that took him to Calvary, and ladies and gentlemen, he became our Savior. Would you agree this morning? Amen. So Apostle Paul, now what I want to get to is this. I said this is uh, what kings are made from because the Bible considered Jesus in the Old Testament king of kings. The Bible considered him Lord of lords. Prince. I mean, the Bible had all kind of names for him in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, all we ever hear is his name is Jesus. Is that right? Or the word. The Bible says in the Revelation that his name shall be the word of God. Is that right? Amen. So, but let's look at something for a minute. How many knows he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? All right. If Jesus was Jehovah in the Old Testament, then ladies and gentlemen, he's Jehovah in the New Testament. If Apostle Paul had Christ living in him, he was Jehovah in the Old Testament, and he's Jehovah in the New Testament. Somebody say amen. What do you mean, Brother McKinney? Let's look at it. Wherefore I beseech ye, be ye followers of me. Now, Apostle Paul made this statement. He said, it is not I that liveth, but it is Christ that liveth. Apostle Paul made another statement, and he says, I have espoused you to one husband, even Christ Jesus. All right, that's the second statement. Number three, he says, he says, I travail until Christ be Formed in you. Is that right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, if the same Christ that resurrected Jesus, Romans the 8th chapter, he said, if the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the tomb, he said, if it come and do brother Bob McKinney, he said, it shall quicken his mortal body. Is that the word of God? So now, Uncle Bob was born of a granddaddy, same McKinney. All right, he was born one day back in 1930-something maybe, and, uh, and, and he was born a McKinney. Now, this was before Christ or the Holy Ghost was given. All right, All right. but now he had the potential of Jesus, of Christ. He had everything he needed to be a blood-bought son of God. But at the time, he's born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Right? He's born in the conception of lust. He, he's born from a husband and a wife. But, but God has greater plans. How many knows he has greater plans tonight? God has greater plans. Did Uncle Bob mess up? Surely he did. Did he make mistakes? Surely he did. He was a man. He was born under that Adamic curse. But, but there come a day. There come a quickening. There, there come a, a day of re rebirth. And, and when that rebirth took place, Uncle Bob wasn't Uncle Bob no more. But he became a son of the Most High God. Is that right? And no difference in Jesus. You said, but Jesus had a virgin birth. And, and I said, well, that's exactly right. But didn't you? You come from a womb you can't see. You come from a, a conception you don't understand. You, it's a virgin birth all over again when God came into your heart. So Jesus' virgin birth was a type and a shadow of our rebirth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what all took place? Here was a man named Jesus. Here's Mary, and she's going to visit Elizabeth, and the Bible says that when she uh, got close to Elizabeth's house, she said, Elizabeth, the Bible says that the salutation from Mary's lips, from her heart, it made the baby in Elizabeth jump, and the Bible says she was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, just the words. Now, I used to poke at Papa and them. I said, see, the first woman preaching. So the Bible says she was filled with the Holy Ghost just in the words of Mary. That's what the Bible says. All right, and so uh, here the baby, the Bible says the baby left, she being filled with the Holy Ghost. So the woman was filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, of course, we know that John the Baptist came out a Holy Ghost-filled child. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, just her salutation. And as soon as Jesus, Mary gave birth to the man-child, Jesus, 
then ladies and gentlemen, John the Baptist was already on the scene six months prior and he was already preaching in the heavens. He was preaching, there's one coming after me who I'm not worthy to, to buckle his sandals and on and on and on. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, John has been speaking in this day and he's saying there's one coming after us. His name is Brother Bob McKinney. His name is Brother Terry Carr and whom I'm not worthy to buckle his sandals. Why? Because Christ lives there. How many of those are talking about today? John the Baptist, ladies and gentlemen, he didn't have the covenant that Jesus had. You say, well, he was the greatest prophet ever lived. Jesus said so. But Jesus said the greatest, the least of the kingdom is greater than John. So John didn't even get the, the, get, to get the availability to enter where you and I have access, access to today. So what does this make me, Brother McKinney? Greater than any prophet that ever walked. <laughs> what scripture says, if John was the greatest prophet and, and, and John can't even enter where we're at, then it makes you greater than any prophet's ever walked. It does away with the five-fold ministry altogether and we are kings and priests. Amen, that's scripture. We gotta just obey them sometimes. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, so here's Jesus. John's baptizing in the water. Jesus comes down, he baptized Jesus. The Bible always puts that reference of the dove being the Holy Ghost. The Bible says it ascended on his shoulder and it fled into the wilderness. Stayed there 40 days and 40 nights where he was tried by Satan, by the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, your friends has got the devil on them. They can try your patience. Somebody say amen. And he tried him out, said, throw yourself down. If he be God, on and on and on. He says it, you know, you can't tempt the Lord, thy God. He's on and on. Man shall live by bread alone, but every word that preceded thy the mouth of God. And ladies and gentlemen, straightway, he was no longer Jesus of Nazareth, but he was Jesus the Christ. For the Bible refers to them, beware of them whom the Holy Ghost ascends, he said, and remains. Watch closely about it. You know, there was a day when the Holy Ghost would come in and out of a person. Samson would get anointed and push walls down. Samson would get anointed, pick up gates, that take a crane to tote around. Samson would get anointed and run a fox down. Anybody try to catch a fox? He was flat-footed, run a fox down. Two of them, tied her tails together and sent them through a field and burn it down. Now, the Holy Ghost would come upon him and he'd pick up a bone that come from an ass. He'd slay however many thousand Philistines and then turn it up and drink out of it. That was the anointing. It went in and out of him like a yo-yo. But the day that we're living in, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, it is definite filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't lose it. No way to lose it. It's different today, ladies and gentlemen. You see, when you're born again, you're not born of the McKinney seed. You're born of God's seed, the incorruptible seed, born not of flesh and blood, but you're born of the power of God. How many believe that tonight? So we've been born again, the Bible says. So that's the stuff kings has made. Before, ladies and gentlemen, there was kings. Before there was priests, then there simply was an order. And see, we're above an order. We're above a law. We're, we're above the things of the world. Jesus made this statement. He said, if I was of this world, I'd take up arms and fight against it. But he knew the law was for the lawless. And he was heaven sent. He couldn't be judged by man's courts. A jury could not convict him. A laws of the land could not doom him. Why? He was not born of this world. He was born from heaven. You and I are not held to this world's standard. You and I are not held to this world's judicial system. We're born from heaven. Are you with me today? Amen. You know, I always dream, I really like historical movies, you know, uh, medieval and things. I, I like to see, you know, what made a person, you know, what made them think back in those days as I was saying earlier this morning. And I looked at Kings and I was fascinated. I got fascinated, not that he was a good one or nothing, but, but Henry VIII, I got fascinated with him. I began to study on him, study on him, study on him. And, you know, he was a real whack job, but it was interesting. And uh, it was in, he had some inter interesting children. And, of course, you know, he pretty much started the Church of England. It was, just, it was just a different sort of cat. Of course, Bloody Mary come from his loins, as well as Elizabeth, which was considered the Queen of Peace. And, uh, you know, on and on and on, but, but I'd like to see these guys, and I, I was always fascinated with royalty. 
how they thought, you know, and how they conducted themselves and, and, and how they, they did things. They seemed to live in a place that they were untouchable. I, didn't, I mean, you take Henry VIII, for instance, ladies and gentlemen, he just told the Pope to go fly a kite. And they, they ain't nobody in the United States, government official or mafia, anybody touched the Pope. They scared to death. And, and the man's riding around in a bulletproof car, but everybody's scared of him. So they ain't gonna speak a word against the Pope. They ain't gonna even look at him cross eyed. But Henry VIII told him just go fly a kite in the interstate. I'll start my own church. It all makes sense to repent to y'all anyways. Seem to live untouchable. And I always thought, I said, man, what makes a man think like that? Where he seems untouchable. Then I began to really consider the Bible and how it's empowered us. And I consider, for instance, the born again experience. And when I really, really, really die, I said, how many's ever really considered what it means to be born again? Really, really considered it. Most of us just say, well, I'm glad I'm safe from hell. That's mostly how, about as far as we go with it. I just don't want to go to hell. I heard Uncle Bob preach about it, and I don't want to be there. You know, or, or, so, but you know, but how many's ever really considered what it does for us? Not just the heaven or hell issue, but the power that it gives. You know, it gives you power, didn't it, Uncle Bob? I talked about this, I talked about him this morning, how no education, a chip very successful. Everything he worked at just went his way, so to speak. You know, he's built an empire out of some pine straw. Who would ever figure? You hear what I'm saying today? He took the waste in the land and built an empire. Everybody scratching the head, getting college degrees, trying to figure out how to rob somebody. He's out there raking some stuff up, some mulch, and builds an empire from it. See, he couldn't have did that without a born again experience. Wouldn't have worked. Wouldn't work for nobody else. But he had a born. See, it empowered him to a certain degree. Now he would guarantee. I guarantee he would agree with me tonight. We don't know the extent of the power. We've just nibbled in it. We've just dabbled in it. We know that the, the, the depths of God, the heights of God is unimaginable to our natural minds. But we'd like to see it, wouldn't we? We'd like to experience it. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we've not examined it, but I begin to examine the born again experience and what it does to this body. And we got some guarantees in the scripture. And the scripture spoke that when you get born again, it's no longer corruptible seed, but it's incorruptible. Now, I was born corruptible, and it, it, had, a, it, it had a contract with death. Any seed that's corruptible will die. But I had a, a contract with an incorruptible seed, which Jesus said can never die. So I said, now look, if I can't die, then I take literally the scripture says, no weapon formed against me can prosper. Death is a weapon. Sickness is a weapon. Are you with me tonight? Uh, poverty, it's a weapon. But according to the born again scriptures that I've received, none of these weapons can touch me. I'm, I'm, no way I can be hindered if I remain in Christ. No way I can be touched. So the more my mind began to wrap around this, and I said, look, Jesus, before I was born, took whipping for my health. Jesus, before I was born, died on Calvary that my sins would be forgiven. Everything that I needed to live in this life, prosperous, healthy, wonderful, productive, he accomplished it at Calvary. Now, when I began to think like that, I began to think like Henry VIII. I'm untouchable through Christ. Then I begin to read scriptures that says like this. He says, "For uh, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. All things. All things work to the good for Brother McKinney as long as he loves the Lord. You hear what I'm saying to you tonight. Now, our problem with the church is this, and I believe this wholeheartedly, is that we do not believe the Bible. 
We take these scriptures when we're in a little tough time or a drought, I know I have, and we just use them for the instance. But if we would live by these words, if we would repeat them till they became a reality, then ladies and gentlemen, we would look the wiles of the devil in the eyes and say, I am untouchable. You can't touch me. How many knows you can't be touched? Amen. It can't come to our dwelling. No sickness. Apostle Paul made the statement, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Here was a man that was shipwrecked, stoned, left for dead, uh, prisoned, beat. You know, does anybody know that he was actually beat just as much as Jesus was? What the scripture says 40 minus 1, 39 stripes he take, left for dead. Oh, no, this man was complete, completely humiliated. It couldn't have been no worse. But yet he still had something inside of him that would say to the people, follow me. I got the package. I've got the goods. Everybody needs what I got. Somebody say amen. That's hard to say, isn't it? You get down and out, been rooted on and rooted up and everything else. It's hard to say, you need what I got. But ladies and gentlemen, if you got Jesus, the world needs what you got. I don't care how far in sin I go, how far in hell I go, the people need what I got. And they need what you got. Somebody say amen. They need what we got. I would consider for a minute Jesus and his life. As I said so many times, here was a man, ladies and gentlemen, that began to preach a doctrine that was contrary to what the world had been promoting, the church has been promoting for 2,000 years. He began to come out and say stuff like, before Abraham was, I am. Guess what? It wasn't popular. Most of them looked at him as a bastard child. His wife, she just wouldn't stay straight and told Joseph a field and said, you know it was an angel, don't worry about it. And his friend said, Joseph, you believe that mess? That's just a loose woman. Considered him just a bastard child. When they was in Super Walmart, people made fun of Jesus. Are you with me today? But ladies and gentlemen, this man somehow thought differently than we think. And he would simply say, before Abraham was, I am. Follow me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, he says, though you are dead, if you believe in me, the resurrection, though ye be dead, yet shall ye live, and ye shall never die. A man considered a bastard, a man considered a degenerate, a man considered preaching a doctrine, ladies and gentlemen, that's contrary to what Elijah taught, that what Moses brought, and what Abraham dreamed of, this man stood against the odds, but you know why? Because of the Christ. And we've got to be able to do the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. Despite the contrariness, despite the other churches rebuking and talking and looking down their pharisaical noses, despite the family members that turns against us, we got to be able to look and say, you need what I got. I've got Jesus Christ living inside of me, and yet I was dead, yet shall I live. Somebody say amen. Say, follow me. I used to tell the people at the church, I'd say, look, you know, don't consider it arrogant or blasphemous to say, follow me. Don't, don't consider that. Was Paul a respecter of persons? Is God a respecter of persons in that case? The same spirit he gave Paul, we have access to. Spirit of Christ. But the Bible says the same spirit that entered Jesus. Paul, one receiving that in 8th chapter of Romans, the same spirit. He said, boy, to come in you and to quicken you, your mortal body. All right? So it's the same spirit that Apostle Paul had. Did Apostle Paul have just a little more dose than we got? I got a feeling it all comes in the same size vial. And he pours it in, and you can't spit it out. How many is with me today? 
All right, so the same Holy Ghost that entered Jesus entered Paul. For the Bible referred to Jesus as the firstborn among many brethren. Just the firstborn. So if he's the firstborn, he's the secondborn. You don't number them unless he's a number two or a number three. Well, of course, ladies and gentlemen, there's a body, isn't it? All right, with that being said, so the same spirit that lived in Apostle Paul lived in Jesus. Guess what? The very same spirit Paul preached about dwells in us. I believe that. This, this, the very spirit, the Bible says in John the first chapter, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. That word, ladies and gentlemen, not this letter, but the word, the spirit that entered Jesus was the word. The spirit that entered Apostle Paul was the word. Take in mind that this word created the heavens and the earth. It created, ladies and gentlemen, Lucifer, Good and evil. It predestinated the sons of God. It led the captivity captive. This same spirit lives in you and I. We're not limited, ladies and gentlemen, but, but rather we're exploding with power. If we could just believe what it says. We can't be condemned. We can't be put out. We can't be destroyed because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. He said, but brother, we're not fighting against the world. Yes, sir, we forgot any. You know, the Bible wasn't written to the world. It was written to the church world. The Bible says judgment first must first come to the house of God. All right? The Bible wasn't written to the church, to the world. It was written to the church world. All right? So with that being said, Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. World, world, church world. You know, I ain't never had a drunk cause me no problems. They may cuss and act crazy a little while. But I ain't never had me no problems, no, no major problems. But the church world now, them bunch of devils, they'll cause you more problems you can shake a stick at. Always. Nipping at your heels. Always praying on you. I'm going to pray for you. But that means pray on you. What it means? Waiting. Just waiting. There's the church world. Greater is in you, though, than he that's in the world. See why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, those that Brother Matthew is picking on love, how does church love and truth and loving one another? I mentioned that this morning a little bit. How that God is love. And how that we got to begin to Express the grace of the Lord. Because God's looking at all this. God's judging all this. And God's judging Brother McKinney and he said, is he showing grace? Is he showing love? Is he, is he, is he preaching or singing or playing because of this reason? Or is he doing it to edify my church? What is his objective? What, why is he full of zeal? Why words that zeal? God's judging this situation. Are you with me today? Ladies and gentlemen, he's looking. He's intently listening and waiting and just waiting for you and I to reach those that he's always had in the palm of his hand. How many knows you was there before the world ever was? The Bible says we was hid in him before the world ever was. Let's turn to Ephesians first chapter and I'm going to turn it over to one of these other brothers Ephesians the first chapter one of my scripture I, probably one of my favorite scriptures he says Fourth verse, Ephesians the first chapter. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This is a point I want to make right here. Now, if he chose us before the world ever was, then Brother Matthew, he didn't just choose the good, he chose it all. Is that right? Now, the God that I know, ladies and gentlemen, and the God that I've been taught about, and the God that Brother 
McKinney's preached about is a God that would not lie. So I don't expect that he give me the spirit of God on the gist, the hope, the whim that Brother McKinney would run his race perfectly. But rather, he give me the spirit of God, ladies and gentlemen. He give me the gift of God because he's seen a finished work. Are you with me today? Now, I think he looks like that. I'm glad he does, don't you? <laughs> he would have given up on me a long time ago. Now, watch. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. All right, so watch. We got two things we're dealing with. We were chosen in him before the foundation of the world, and we were holy and without blame, and he predestinated us. Somebody say predestinated. Okay, seventh verse. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of skin, sins according to the riches of his grace. Wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have or. or Obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of his will who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now, what I like about this so much is this. You know the song? Yes, he knew me. Yet, he loved me. Amen. He saw me Naked. He saw me without the clothes. He, the Bible says he robed us in righteous clothes. So we were naked in sin. All right. So before he put these righteous, before he hid me, I was uncovered. He saw Jonathan for who Jonathan was. For whatever reason, he loved Jonathan for what he was. He loved Brother Don for whatever he was. For whatever reason, he loved you for whatever you are. What did he do? He predestinated, so he clothed us. The Bible says we're hid in Christ. So now you can't see me for seeing the blood that's been applied. Is that right tonight? So now I'm hid behind the veil. I'm hid in Jesus. He predestinated all this. Why? Because one day he's seen a finished work. And this finished work wasn't a slave boy in bondage. But rather it was a blood bought paid in full son and daughter of God without sin, without shame, without condemnation, completely gifted with the presence of God. Oh, he been me today. All of this he saw in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, just that quickly, God saw it all. And he predestinated us according to his good will. Isn't that good tonight? Amen. That God saw past me and found who I really am. God saw past the sin, hurts, disappointments, rejection, condemnation. He saw past it all, ladies and gentlemen. And he grabbed the brother Don O'Hearn that he loved from the beginning of the world. Brother Matthew was exactly right. We go through this walk of life just to get to the end of our road and say, here I am. Use me. I told the brothers at church one time, I says, you know, all this stuff about that, you know, you just go to God and fall down and he takes it all. I said, that's a bunch of gibberish. He always grabbed me by the ankle and pulled me through the briar patch. When I finally give in, I got every thorn and thistle and everybody's boot in my teeth and in my rear and everything else before I ever get there. How many knows what I'm talking about? And I guarantee most of you say the same thing. You went through hell to get to heaven. Are you with me today? Ladies and gentlemen, he changeth not. I find that Job went through hell to speak to God face to face. I find that Moses went through hell 
to see God on top of Mount Zion. I see that Joseph literally went to hell to sit on the right hand of Pharaoh and be numbered with him. I find that David went through hell to be considered a man out of God's own heart. I find that Jesus went to hell in order to set captivity captive and be considered the son of God. And I see Paul went to hell before he was considered to say, follow me as I follow Christ. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give him a big old hand clap. But it don't change who we are, amen? We're still, will, and always will be the sons and the daughters of God. If his spirit lives in you, you're not your own, but you're bought with a price. And ladies and gentlemen, he loves you more than this world. Brother, Brother Nolan used to say this. If you got a financial problem, he would say, he said, the Lord will bankrupt heaven, put the angels on half rations to give you what you need. That's how much he loves us. Amen. You know, what's amazing, ladies and gentlemen. We can believe at times so much just to find us in other times believing so little. We need to put our faith to work, don't we? Brother Jonathan needs to put his faith to work and realize that God has forgiven us. God set us free. We're sons of God. We're we're living with him in heavenly places. He's rescued us from sin and the turmoils of this world. And he'll set us free if we just ask him. Amen. Turn to Brother Terry here. and Let him conclude the service. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a... You can do better than that. Praise God. Because you're doing it for the Lord, not me. Amen. Praise God. I tell you. Amen. Do you believe that? You can sit down a minute. I ain't going to preach. I might add to it. Amen to God. I want you to know. Because these things have got to be said. Amen. The scripture said, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? Amen. And the scripture said that to do the will of God, he said to believe on him who God has sent. Give him a hand clap. Amen. Where it was Adam, where it was Moses, David, Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, Brother Jonathan, Brother Bob, Brother Don, amen. The rest of you, amen. And myself also. Man, many times we find ourselves in the valley of decision over Brother Jonathan. Hallelujah. But you know what? That's us. Amen. It ain't God. He's already done, made it for you. All you got to do is just walk in it, honey. All we got to do is just walk in it, amen. Put all the rest out of the side. Man, I can sure identify ain't going through hell. Amen to God. Amen, but you know, we pressed our way and pressed our way. And many times our darkness was surrounded. Amen. But God, he is light. And the light has been placed inside of us. Amen. And we can shine. Amen. Satan always desires to destroy us. Amen. He's always against us, amen. But I'll tell you, but this is the fact. Yeah, we have to carry our cross, amen. He said, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me, amen. And because he said, I would come and me and my father would come and dwell in you and, and sup with you, amen. And you could sup with us. We don't sup enough, Amen. We don't suffer enough a lot of times. Amen, but you can. Even when Adam had disobeyed him, he come looking for it. Hey, man, he might have been, part of him might have been put out in one place. I want you to know, but you know what? He was still, according to the word, was the son of God, amen. And you are too. And daughters of God, amen. Because the woman is in the man, amen, at this point, amen. But we all in the presence of God. And you can live in the presence of God. 
Yeah, the devil tries to beat us over the head all the time. You know where he's at? You know where the cues of the brother's at? Hey, man, where does he talk to you at? Where do you hear him talking at? Hallelujah. But he said, praise God, Jesus did it so many times. He said, get thee behind me, Satan, amen. Get thee behind me, Satan, amen. I don't care where you at, where you been, where you think you go. Praise God. Uh, God has got me and you and all of us in the palm of his hand. Hallelujah. He's had it here all the time. And go back even before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Elder, you say you can't keep yourself, you can't lose yourself. It's God that does this thing. And he lives in us. Amen. Amen. If we can look at one another and see him in us. Amen, brother Bob. When we can look at God, see him in us. Amen. And we pray that others can see him in us too. Amen. As the manifestation is coming more and more and more. And the manifestation and the light is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Amen. Amen. Read the other day. Amen in the book. He said, in that day, Brother Jonathan, what day? He said, in that day, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. And the light of the sun, he said, shall be as the light of seven days, amen. He said, when the Lord binds us the breach of his people, amen, and we live it, amen, I believe when he came, amen, the light was shining, and it shined greater and greater and greater to this day we're at now. Hallelujah. Amen, every one of our brethren before us has saw into that, and they was looking for it. Amen, Abraham was seeking for a city. He said they had foundations. Amen, and the scripture tells us what that was. Whose builder and maker is God? Amen. They all, they all lived and they all died in the faith. Amen. But now, as this faith, as Brother Jonathan says so many times, amen, it's coming to fruition in his sons and in his daughters. Amen. Until it will totally, I'm talking about that light, will totally consume us. Amen. Amen. You, we're living in. The greatest day they even talk about, Brother Stan. Amen. Things angels desire to look into. The things, amen, we come up to this point. Amen. Ain't he beautiful? Can you see the Lord? Amen. How do we see it? Amen. We see the eyes of the word of his revelation. Amen. And we be, and as he, as he if he will say, materializes in front of you, and you see him more. And you see him more, and you see him more. But what does Satan do? He tries to stop that. Amen. He puts us through things, amen, that we go through. Hallelujah. But we know it don't matter. Amen. And, oh, Lord, I, I just have to calm down a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, these things are true. Amen. If you want to know them, ask him. He'll show you. Praise God. He'll show you the glory. Man, we see the other part. Amen. But the glory of the Lord is coming forth in his people greater and greater and greater as we give ourselves to it. As we give ourselves to him and the things of this world, you might say, it don't mean nothing much anymore to you. Amen. And now, now, now 50-something-year-old, bro, Bob, I'm, 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 I'm gaining on you, amen. But I'm telling you, amen. But day by day, by, by faith to faith to glory to glory, amen, pressing our way into the kingdom of God through the hell that he was preaching about, amen, until we press through like the little woman and touches him. And the change starts taking place. Not only a healing in your body, amen, that God, but a healing for all of you. The whole person that we are. Amen. Praise God. But you know, no, it don't 
seem to yet appear what we what we shall be. Amen. But the picture is getting more clear and more clear of what we're coming to because he said when we see him, we'll be made fasting like unto him. Amen. Press the fight. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen to God. Just like our brethren have a force to the day they passed on across to the other side. Amen. In that place, in that place, they, they're waiting on us. They're waiting on us. They're waiting on us. Amen. To cross that veil where they are. Amen. I have, well, however you want to say it. Amen. Brother John, he says that he can say a lot better than I can many, many times. But I'm telling you, it's a fact. Amen. And I was telling the other day, and it says, I tell you, I said, these things have got to come forth. Amen. And they are coming forth. Amen. To what was that seeking for and is pressing for and fighting every devil in hell for it. Amen. That tries to stop you because they know as it comes through, it's going to dissipate what they are. Amen. People's looking, to, you know, to do these things. Romans chapter eight, things these Ephesians chapter one, and and so on and so forth. But over in Ephesians, he also said this. He said that we press through these things and press and press and press until he said we could be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. You love the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap. Stand to your feet. Praise God. Amen. I appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. I really do. I appreciate it that we can hear from him. Amen. That we can hear from him. And we don't have just to live that routine every day. Amen. I don't like that routine, Brother John. I don't like it at all. Amen. Because God has got more for us. And He will, He will do what He said. Amen. And like the old elder said before He passed off the scene, He says, somebody's going to make it. Somebody's going to press through. Somebody. And who is it going to be? The ones that's seeking his face. The ones that's, that their spirit's crying out. Out by Father, Lord. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you, God, that it is a reality. And can be a reality in our lives. And those round about, God. Hallelujah. As we press, Lord. God, through the things, Lord, amen, to get to reach that prize that you have for us, Lord. Help us, God, amen. Help us, Lord, because we need your help, God. Help us, God, Lord, to let, let us, let you be manifested, God, and not us, amen, because the, the true man and the true woman is the one that's within, Father, and we know that, Amen. Draw us, God. Draw us. Let us walk. Let us be closer, God. Hallelujah. Till we make that change that we so, so much desire. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name. Does anybody need prayer tonight? If you need prayer, you need, you need a healing. Amen. You don't get closer to God. Amen. You want to press on into what the things that God is saying to us tonight? Amen. Whatever it may be. Praise God. This is open. We'll pray. Anoint you. Amen. God will touch you. He'll change your life if you need a change. Amen. If you're going through problems. Amen. Any battle that you may fight, God is right there with you in the middle of it. Amen. Wanting to guide you on through. Wanting to lead you on through. Amen. Hallelujah. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Amen to God. No matter what you think you've done. And I say thank you've done. 
what you have done, amen. God's already, amen, made the way. Amen. Drawn out of him. Anybody need prayer tonight? Amen. Before I turn this back over or, or however they want to do it, amen, it don't matter to me. It's all right. Anybody, amen. Anybody you want to pray for you, who you want to pray, maybe we'll all pray, amen. How you like it?